What is going on everyone? My name is Anson. So we're back with another video and I wanted to take a moment to just introduce to you all authentication. I know I did do like about two videos about authentication or I did one, but I kind of implied that you all knew what it was. So I want to actually take some time to formally introduce to you all what exactly authentication is and how we're going to use this concept to build out our, our backend system. So essentially authentication is really just a way for a user to identify themselves, okay? We pretty much want to verify who that user is and we want to also do that because we don't want random people who are using our application to be able to perform certain actions such as, you know, creating uh, status updates, creating blog posts. You want to be able to allow the user with a valid identity to use your application. The reason why you want to, of course, implement authentication into your platform is if you have a bunch of random guests posting stuff without any identity whatsoever, it's going to be a hard time moderating that platform. And you might have some users who are going to break certain rules that you might have set, and it's going to be impossible to you know restrict them from your application. So it's very important that you set up authentication to only allow verified users to access your platform, okay? And that's really what authentication is. Typically, the way it works is you'll have a backend system that is set to allow the user to send their credentials, typically the username and the password, over an HTTP uh, post request, okay? So whenever the user provides their credentials, which is usually in a form, a web form, right? Let's say, for example, if you're trying to log into Facebook or Instagram, you would usually, uh, well, all the time, you would enter in your, your email, your phone number, and then your password, okay? And then when you click on login, it'll send a post request to the authentication server, and then the authentication server will go ahead and validate the credentials and the username that you passed in. Okay, and if everything is good, then it's going to go ahead and return a successful response to the client that made that request. And then that client will have access to the application. And we know who that client is because what happens on the back end is it generates a session ID, which it sends to the browser or the client. And then the client will save that as a cookie. So then every subsequent request made to the server the server will go ahead and take that cookie. It's going to parse it. It's going to check to see if that cookie is valid. And it's going to know who that user is based off of that cookie. Okay. If you didn't see my video where I implemented a, uh, a basic login implementation without any libraries whatsoever, without passport, that is, go ahead and check that out. It might explain a lot more. But hopefully this little brief introduction of authentication gave you an idea. The overall goal of authentication is to protect your application from random people so you do that by implementing a system to allow users to create an account and then verify their profile so then they can actually use your platform okay so what exactly is passport now i know we talked a lot about authentication but now let's talk about passport okay so passport is a library that is uh, it's pretty much just an, an authentication middleware library uh, and we can use that in any node.js application now it's more common to use it with express.js but you can use it with literally any uh, library that you want, okay? Now, with Passport, it pretty much abstracts away all of the authentication strategy for us, so we don't have to actually implement it ourselves. We can let Passport take very good care of it, and Passport actually does a really great job with it, so we're going to go ahead and actually base this tutorial off of Passport.js. Okay, it's been around for a very long time. It's widely used. And also in later tutorials, when we learn how to, or when I teach you all how to implement OAuth 2, which in case you aren't familiar with that term, it basically allows you to uh, have the users log in with a third party application, such as Facebook, Twitter, Google, uh, GitHub, LinkedIn, and et cetera. And Passport.js supports all of those authentication strategies. Okay, so all Passport is, is it's just a middleware library that you can plug into your application and you can set it up to take care of authentication. It also does other stuff too, such as it takes the user and it serializes the user into the session. So that way you don't have to manually update the session object like we did in previous episodes when we covered sessions. Passport will take care of that underneath the hood. So whenever you want to check to see if the user is authenticated, there's actually a property which we will take a look at later called request request.user and that actually that's that's what passport does it attaches the user object from your database 
into that request object so you can easily get the authenticated user. Okay, so I think that's a good enough brief introduction of authentication and passport. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at a real implementation of passport and how we can actually implement authentication. So before we get started though, make sure you have finished all of the previous episodes of the ExpressJS tutorial. If you haven't already, I do highly recommend you check it out. But if you already know the basics of Express, you don't need to watch it. You can go ahead and actually just clone this code right over here. So right now there's only 13 commits, but obviously after this episode, there'll be more, but what you can do is you can basically, uh, click through, um, you, you can click through each commit and you can see all the changes. So you can start from the latest commit, which is episode 13, and then you can go ahead and, you know, kind of like work along with it. Okay. But like I said, this is where you can get the code. It'll be in the description. So let's go ahead and get started with implementing passport JS. Uh, with a basic username and password authentication flow. All right, so for the rest of this video, we're only going to go ahead and install all of the dependencies because there's a lot of stuff that we do need to cover and I don't want to jumble it all into one video. I want to take it step by step. So we'll first set up all of our uh, packages first. So let me go ahead and open up a new uh, terminal window or terminal pane on the side. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. So we'll go into Express JS tutorial and we're going to go ahead and install Passport, uh, Passport, which is the library. Um, and we're going to go ahead and install a strategy. Okay. And that strategy is going to be Passport Local. Okay. So the reason why we're installing Passport Local is because we're doing local authentication or the strategy is a local strategy, which basically means we have our own authentication mechanism. We have our own username. We have our own password. If you were to use OAuth 2, okay, you wouldn't be responsible for keeping track of your own set of emails and passwords because all, all that's going to happen is the user is going to use something like Facebook to authenticate. And all you're going to do is you can obviously save the user's details to your database. So that way you can, uh, you know, render their data to them. Okay, but because but you wouldn't have their password from their Facebook account. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and just hit enter. And once we do that, we're going to need to go ahead and set up our uh, middleware. Okay, so we're going to go into index.js. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to go up top over here and I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave a comment over here. Uh, router. I'm just going to call this routes. Okay. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and import passport from passport. Just like that. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go down. Uh, let's see right over here. So right before our routes, right before our routes have been registered and after all of our other middleware. So after the session has been initialized, okay, we'll go ahead and call app.use and we're going to pass in passport and we're going to go ahead and call initialize. So this will actually initialize passport. And then we also need to, and now because our application is using sessions, we should also set up sessions with passport as well. Whoops. It's session. Now you probably don't need to actually enable this if you're not using sessions in your application, but most of the time when you do use passport authentication, Majority of the time you will be using sessions anyway, so it's you make sure you enable this. Okay, that's literally all we need to do in order to actually enable passport, uh, the enable the password middleware. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and set up a strategy for our authentication. Okay, now with the strategy, the way that it, the, the the responsibility of the strategy is to pretty much take in the username and the password. And it's going to go ahead and perform our own authentication logic. So if you saw my previous video where we implemented a very basic uh, authentication mechanism without any uh, passport JS, right? If you saw that, what we had to do, and let me actually go to that code because I actually have it over here. You saw that right over here, what we did was we searched for the user based on their email address. If the user was not found, we returned a 401 directly. If the user was found, we compared the... Uh, we compare the password that the user sent in the post request with the password, with the hashed password uh, that's saved 
through the user record and if the passwords were both the same like if the hash was matching the user's uh the, the raw password right then we would go ahead and proceed which meant that the user was successfully authenticated and what we also did was we uh, we referenced the session object and we attached the user property right and we assigned this uh user property to the value of user db okay now we're going to go ahead and get rid of all this well, a lot of stuff that we're doing here we're going to reuse but ultimately we're not going to be doing this inside this post request in fact we're going to actually comment all this out we're not going to delete it we're going to comment it out okay just so we can reference it later okay but what we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to go ahead and set up the local strategy because there is a lot of stuff that we do have to do and i don't want to make this video too long because we did talk about authentication uh passport and we also did install the packages and registered the middleware so hopefully this video made sense and i'll see you all in the next episode peace out